The interscalene block is used to provide anesthesia for shoulder or upper arm surgery, including orthopedic and vascular procedures. It can be used alone or as an adjunct to medication to provide postoperative pain relief. The block may also be used to provide pain relief for reduction of a dislocated shoulder. The materials and equipment required to perform an interscalene block include a nerve stimulator and electrode, two 20 milliliter syringes connected by a three way stopcock, and 40 milliliters of the anesthetic of your choice. You will also need a 5 milliliter syringe with a 25 gauge needle filled with 1% lidocaine and a sterile prep solution. Obtain a 22 gauge 50 millimeter insulated stimulating needle. The patient should lie supine with the head of the bed elevated at a 30 degree angle. Turn the patient's head away from the side to be blocked. With the head turned to the side, look for the pulsation of the external jugular vein. Next, identify the anterior and middle scalene muscles. Ask the patient to sniff deeply through the nose. The negative inspiratory pressure will create a dip between the anterior and middle scalene muscles and make them more prominent in the neck. This dip is the groove in which the brachial plexus lies. Use povidone iodine to prep the neck skin. Start at the insertion site and proceed circumferentially. Allow the solution to dry before inserting the needle. Use the 25 gauge needle to inject 1% lidocaine posterior to the external jugular vein to raise a subcutaneous wheel. Prior to inserting the stimulating needle, use a beveled needle to puncture the skin. The puncture site will allow the blunt tip of the stimulating needle to pass easily through the skin. Insert the 22 gauge stimulating needle through the cutaneous wheel, keeping the needle perpendicular to the skin surface. Once the stimulating needle has passed through the skin, Ask an assistant to turn on the stimulator current to a level of 1.5 milliamps. Advance the needle slowly, looking for stimulation of the deltoid, triceps, biceps, or forearm muscles. As the needle is inserted, it may stimulate the phrenic nerve. Jerking movement of the abdomen indicates motor activity of the phrenic nerve. The phrenic nerve lies anterior to the brachial plexus in the neck. Thus, diaphragmatic twitches indicate that the needle should be withdrawn and redirected posterior to its original path of insertion. Directing the needle slightly posteriorly, advance the needle looking for shoulder or arm muscle stimulation. The brachial plexus is typically located no further than a depth of 2 centimeters. If you cannot obtain stimulation within this distance, the needle should be withdrawn to the skin's surface and redirected. Often, when the needle is correctly located, the practitioner will perceive a popping sensation as the needle passes through the brachial plexus nerve sheath. Confirm the needle placement by observing appropriate muscle stimulation. Here, deltoid muscle twitches are elicited indicating that the brachial plexus nerves are stimulated by the needle. Slowly turn the nerve stimulator down to 0.4 milliamps, maintaining muscle twitching as the current is decreased. If nerve stimulation is lost, withdraw the needle and redirect it 10 degrees anterior or posterior to the original path. If you have difficulty maintaining nerve stimulation at a current of 0.4 milliamps or less, ask the patient to turn the head such that the ear opposite to the side being blocked touches the bed. This position stretches the nerve sheath and brings it toward the skin surface. It also stabilizes the nerve sheath during needle insertion. 
The needle is correctly located when the muscle stimulation occurs at a level of 0.2 to 0.4 milliamps of current. Ask your assistant to aspirate the syringe and inject 5 milliliters of anesthetic. Advise the patient of symptoms that may be experienced if the anesthetic were injected into a blood vessel including ringing in the ears or a metallic taste in the mouth. Inject 40 milliliters of local anesthetic aspirating the syringe after each 5 milliliter dose to prevent intravascular injection. Place the patient in a comfortable position. Instruct him or her to avoid moving the arm because poor motor control can result in injury. Depending upon the anesthetic used, the block may not take full effect for up to 30 minutes. Surgical incision should be delayed until the medication time of onset has passed.